Hello everyone, and welcome to my first Mod Showcase episode in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this series, I'm going to be showcasing certain mods, because there are quite a lot of mods for Kerbal Space Program, and I think they deserve some explanation, and I've always wanted to be able to play around with some of them, even if I'm not going to use them in my main series. For instance, there's the little uh, uh, Space Shuttle mod and stuff like that, that... Um, I, I don't really want to use in a series, but I would still like to uh, mess around with just a little bit. Uh, but first things first, in this episode I'm going to be talking about the realism mods, because they, they sort of have a little class of their own, and uh, they, they require some explanation too. And then we'll get into the fancier part mods and the other interesting additions you can make to the game afterwards. So this is going to be for people who may not be as familiar with the mods. Uh, if you're a veteran modder for Kerbal Space Program, uh, maybe this will help. And more likely, you're going to be able to tell me things I didn't know about the mods. But uh, yeah, so first of all, the realism mods. So we're, we're going to be talking about realism overhaul and all that. But first, let's talk about the basic three, if you will. And uh, if regular Kerbal Space Program is normal difficulty, then the first three mods I'm going to be talking about are the first level up, let's say hard difficulty. And those first three mods are Ferrum Aerospace Research, or FAR, uh, Deadly Reentry, and then this one, TAC Life Support. Now you can use ECLSS, which is another uh, life support mod. I haven't done so, and I, I don't see it being updated quite as much. It might be compatible, it might not be, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's compatible with uh, 0.23.5. The reason I'm doing this, uh, starting this series now is because a lot of the mods that I want to talk about have been updated, and in particular the realism mods. One of the realism mods has not been updated, I'll say this right now. It would have been one of my basic, basic uh, hard difficulty mods, and that's uh, Re Remote Tech, Remote Tech 2. But the mod developer for that one says that uh, he or she will not be updating that uh, mod until 0.24. So that's not in the mix this time around. So, uh, yeah, but uh, we're talking about firmware space, data reentry, and tag light support first. This is tag light support, and once you open up a new, a new save in Kerbal Space Program and you have tag light support installed, it will give you this little pop up, and this will allow you to make the settings. And obviously you have it enabled if you're going to be playing with it. Uh, allow respawn. Normally the Kerbals pop back up again if uh, they die. And if you want to be real hardcore about it, you'll tick that off. Otherwise, uh, so this is going to be dead as uh, dead. As dead. And uh, resource consumption rates. These you should probably just leave as is. Basically they consume one unit of food, one unit of water, and one unit of oxygen per day. Okay, and these uh, units are uh, have a certain mass ratio. I mean, these this isn't mass, so this is not one ton. Okay, so there is a mass setting that you can see in tacresources.config. So you can go into the config file and mess with how much one unit of these can weigh or have mass. Okay, so that's the purpose of TAC Life Support. The purpose of TAC Life Support is to add food, water, and oxygen consumption for the Kerbals. They also need electricity uh, for various purposes, for life support, right? And they have a maximum amount of time that uh, they can live without food, water, and oxygen, and electricity. This is uh, 30 days, I believe. And uh, then, wait a minute. Uh, so this is three days. So three days without water. And we're talking about seconds here, so this is five minutes without oxygen. And finally, uh, this is trying to do math in my head. Uh, fail. Um, <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, two hours without electricity, I think. Is that right? Yeah. All right, so again, might as well keep these uh, default for now. Okay, so that's type life support. Fair Marrow Space is probably most uh, notable if we go into the space plane hangar, so let's go there. Oh, I might want to mention right now, for some reason, the buttons don't automatically come up here. Uh, so, you need... I, I don't know why, but we need to manually have uh, toolbar integration for FAR and TAC Light Support. Otherwise, you'll never see the buttons for these, and that would be bad. 
And so here you can uh, see Tag Light Support will tell you, based on whatever you're creating in your uh, Space Plane Hangar or VAB, how much food, water, and oxygen and electricity you've built in based on how much crew you have. So that's helpful. This is Fermi Aerospace and it looks daunting but you don't strictly need to look at this as long as you know what you're doing when you're building an aircraft. Um, but it can tell you, uh, take these as warning signs if these are red. Obviously if you don't even have an aircraft uh, they're going to be red. So let's build one quickly. Let's build a very uh, stockish, oh, actually let's build a crazy thing. I think I, I, I want to, well let's, let's not build it with a, well actually I should build it with a Kerbal in uh, just, uh, just because we want to see tack light support at work. So we're going to examine the aerodynamics of something intriguing. Let's just put, oh that's a big one. Uh, I better I'll talk about the resizing of certain parts in uh, in realism overhaul in a sec. Uh, so some of these parts you see I'm I'm not getting to right now. Uh, yeah, let let me start getting into the level three of difficulty. Actually, now that we see all these parts, let me mention. So we talk about hard difficulty, which is fair mirror space daily reentry, which of course makes it so that uh, you have to be careful with your re-entries into the atmosphere because you can overheat and explode. Uh, and of course that means that these heat tolerances you see on this engine max temperature 1800, well that's not so important because the engines aren't really horrible, but the fuel tanks have a heat tolerance. This one has a max temperature of 1450 degrees. Well, that means it's going to explode if you go over that, and daily re-entry ensures that if you re-enter incorrectly, you will explode. Okay, so let's do something a little bit crazy, and uh, since we'll be having Jeb fly this, that's fair enough. Let's try and find the stock ones. The stock ones, the stock parts are always at the back, because uh, it's basically in order of when it was loaded in. Um, and I need parachutes, otherwise he's not going to survive. Okay, so the next level of uh, difficulty, as I was saying, is when you add engine igniter, uh, real chutes, real fuels, stretchy tanks, and real engines. Okay, l let me go through them one at a time, because uh, this is a lot of stuff. So, real chutes, which is what I'm going to be doing right now. So, this is a real chute, radio chute. And th this actually helps. It's not adding difficulty. It's actually solving a problem. And the problem is that the uh, default shoots, the default parachutes in Kerbal Space Program deploy immediately and produce high g-forces. Well, with deadly re-entry, those high g-forces are going to make your Kerbal die. Well, not always. I mean, uh, it's usually if uh, um, if uh, it's a sustained g-forces for a long period of time. But anyway, there's a high probability that your Kerbal will die. So we don't want that to happen. So we use real shoots. Real shoots will prevent that sort of thing. Okay. So uh, they're, so they're helpful. They're just straight up helpful. Now the next uh, mod I want to talk about that uh, is uh, I don't know if it adds difficulty. Uh, it does when you combine it with uh, one other thing. Uh, the next mod I want to talk about is stretchy tanks. So we have a stretchy tank, like so, and the thing with stretchy tanks, you'll see where it says stretchy tanks on the side there. Hold R to uh, uh, move the mouse up or down to stretch its length, hold F to stretch its width, and T to change its texture. So R, boop, 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 like that, and you can hold Shift R to make it uh, go faster. F for the width, the width, I. Okay, so yeah. Okay, come on. No, no. Uh, okay, come on. Help me out here, little tank. Okay. And let's try and get it. Uh, 1.25 is the stock size. Don't know why it's so... F making it so hard for me. Come on, you. Okay, there we go. And T to change its texture. 
And of course, if you've never seen this before, I, I hope this is rather cool for you. And let's let's go with this. Okay, so that's that's uh, stretchy tanks. Now, it it's of course uh, makes things easier because you don't have to have the set uh, shape of the tanks. However, the reason it's necessary is because we've also got uh, this mod. This is real fuels. And now, instead of just having uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer, you have all these fuels that have their own density. For instance, if in this tank with its set volume of uh, 7,200 units, I decide to put liquid hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen 7,200 units only has a mass of 0.63 because hydrogen takes up a lot of volume uh, based on uh, any given mass of it. If I add liquid oxygen, however, that's 8 tons. So liquid oxygen is way, way heavier than liquid hydrogen. Okay, much more dense. And so you've got this complication. So yeah, stretchy tanks itself is not a big deal, but once you've got real fuels, uh, you'll probably want those stretchy tanks because things get really, uh, there's no way you're going to survive very easily with the set size tank. Well, I mean, okay, you could. Uh, you'll have to tweak them quite a lot though. You'll have to mess around with the how much you put in each tank. Um, especially with the liquid hydrogen which is just uh, silly sometimes. Okay, but this isn't all that there is to stretchy tanks so I'm actually gonna take that off. There is... A the stretchy tanks mod is actually called stretchy SRBs. This is important. Okay, so it's uh, if you look on the forums, this is all from the forums. Don't bother looking on Kerbal Spaceport for this stuff. Uh, it might be there, it might not. But we're, uh, go to the forums to find these. Uh, so Kerbal Space Program forums. And uh, it'll be add-on projects. And this is the SRBs. And this is what we're going to be playing around with here. This is why I said I was thinking of doing a, a crazy thing. And this is the crazy thing we're doing. Okay, and so, uh, you, so I used R again to uh, lengthen it. Uh, there is tech levels with these uh, stretchy SRBs, and this is part of Realism Overhaul, I think. Or is it, I, I forget whether it's stretchy SRB or the Realism Overhaul mod itself. Okay, and so I'm going to improve its ISP by increasing its tech level. Now, when you are working with a tech tree, you won't get these further tech levels immediately. So the further tech levels are only after you get further into the tech tree. Right now I'm playing sandbox, so I can uh, increase the tech level at will. Uh, this is approximately the ISP of the space shuttles, uh, solid rocket boosters, so I'm going to keep it like that. Now with the SRBs, you have a lot of other stuff to work with. And let me slap on uh, a favorite mod, MechJeb. MechJeb helps us to see uh, the information about this vessel that we're creating and importantly the thrust to weight ratio. Now this this thing is gonna go crazy because it's got a thrust to weight ratio that's very high. But we can fix that because we can adjust the burn time on this SRB. The burn time can be adjusted by pressing G and I'm going to increase the burn time. If I increase the burn time on the SRB, I decrease the thrust of the SRB because it's the same fuel burning, just slower, right? So I'm going to fix this so that the sea level thrust is about 1. And uh, I guess I can use S, uh, shift again to go faster with this. And there we go. Okay, so this basic thing, uh, crazy thing, is now at uh, thrust weight ratio 1. You notice that the delta V did not change. It's the same amount of fuel, so the del delta V shouldn't change. Now, we take a look here. Uh, we need wings, right? Now, I have not added procedural wings. Okay, so procedural wings is another mod, but I don't think it's updated yet for for Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. So I, I, it may maybe may not be. I don't know. So, this is not going to be enough wings, is it? No. It's been a while since I've played without, uh, without uh, procedural wings. Let me take a look if there's any other mods. Oh, I, sh I should mention real engines. So, you'll notice these. there are a lot of parts here that you're not familiar with if you're just playing stock KSP. 
and that's because I installed the engines from the KW Rocketry and Nova Punch 2 pack. I actually installed the entire packs, but I dumped, uh, and importantly, dumped the fairings and fuel tanks. Okay, this is not uh, realism mod stuff. However, they're useful because the real engines mod changes these engines from KW Rocketry and from Nova Punch 2 into real engines. So you can see this engine is an RL10A4 and you can look that up on Wikipedia. It is the upper stage for the Titan or Atlas lifters as it says in the description and its manufacturer is Pratt & Whitney, a real manufacturer. So you can see these are now real engines. Their stats have been reconfigured so that they match actual engines in real life. Now these would all, all be overpowered for Kerbal Space Program, regular, but we've added other mods which I'll get to in a moment that make sure that these real engines are not overpowered. So I'll show that off in a sec. But uh, for now we're not going to be using these engines. Uh, this is the Space Shuttle engine by the way, and if you saw my Space Shuttle special, that's, that's, that's it. That's the puppy. And if you want four of them to make an SLS, there you have it. That's your SLS cluster, okay? But we're, we're doing an SRB because I hate SRBs and I don't think they should ever be put on planes, so I'll probably never do this again. Uh, so that's, that's the plot here. But we can make a plane with them, and the way we do that is actually we need a little bit of battery power. There's some of these other parts, these battery banks, uh, came from uh, KW, as you can see, KW Rocketry. Uh, why, why don't we put two like that? Uh, because it won't let me. Okay, that's fine. Now... When building a space plane, or in, well, this is hardly gonna be as well, it'll probably get to space, but that's not my intention, actually. Um, just make sure that the center of lift is very close to the center of mass. Actually, uh, rule of thumb is that the 25% of the, well, explaining cord and stuff like that is probably too much. Okay, let's make sort of a Hayao Miyazaki sort of design here. And if you've watched those anime, you'll know what I mean. Uh, Actually, uh, let's have canards on this part. Move this back. Okay, control surfaces, because those are important. Where are they? Ah. Okay, and finally some way to control... Okay, let me move this, these, a little bit closer. That's good. We need some wheels. We'll just go with the stock wheels. Now, uh, B9 Aerospace gives you better wheels. Oh, uh, th these are the tack life support tanks for the water. Carbon extractor, alkaline cell. Actually, the alkaline cell doesn't work. Now, these tanks have been retextured. And if you look at the tack life support thread, you'll see the new textures. Um, he links it in the main post. So get the, get the better textures, these better textures for the tanks. And so food container, life support. Life support has all of it, food, oxygen, water. Uh, but then you can also add the specific tanks. You can add recyclers. So these are all recyclers. And, uh, and yeah, it's all a lot of fun. And, but we don't need to worry about that because the pod itself comes with, uh, with some of it. You can see uh, one day's worth of oxygen one day's worth of water and one day's worth of food. So that, that's all built into the pod already. And we're not going to be flying this for more than a day. Okay, so uh, like I was saying, landing gear.
Landing gear, of course, has to be behind the center of mass, but uh, uh, far enough in front... Uh, well, um, as close in front as possible to allow the thing to rotate, but not rotate too much, so it's, it's a very delicate thing. Okay, and finally, uh, just one. Yeah. There. Oh, actually, we should have that in the back here. Having it on the nose doesn't look good because we gotta decouple that. Ooh, but that's such a... that'll have a tail scrape, guaranteed. Okay. Now, let's take a look at what Ferrum Aerospace has to uh, say about this. Let's change the density to just one atmosphere. And let's say Mach uh, 0.4, well, let's say 0.3. I don't think we gotta be lifting off less than 0.3. Okay, calculate stability. Look at that. It's stable. Well, mostly. Uh, change in y direction with respect to side slip angle should be negative. Okay, I'll take that into advisement, but mostly okay. Uh, how does it go when we reach Mach 1? Ooh, a little bit of issue here. And so you just have to see this is how things go. At you want the plane to restore to normal, basically uh, go back to stable. But what these are saying is that instead of going back to where it should be, you might have to force it there because it'll tend to go wildly off in the wrong direction. Uh, that's, that's simplifying it a little bit, but, but that's the idea. And uh, let's see, calculate uh, it's, it's, uh, Mach 1 is going to be uh, slightly bad times, but it could be worse. Alright, so just uh, you can play around with that. It's, it's fairly simple to look at. Uh, just. Uh, but figuring out, diagnosing how to fix it though is the tricky part. Alright, but I'm not going to get into that in this one. Let's see if this flies. I don't know if it has enough lift. It's got... Uh, let, let's give it a little bit more thrust. Uh, change, the, change that uh, timing to... so that I get the full one unit worth of thrust to weight ratio. Okay, let's try this out. And uh, this is special. I'm not going to be too worried if uh, Jeb uh, bites the dust, but uh, let's let's see about this. Okay, just to try it out. Ooh, there's a little flame in there too, huh? Okay, uh, just to try it out, I've got this alternate uh, resource panel here. This the it allows you to. Okay, well it's not allowing me to do much right now. Usually it allows me to look at the normal resource panel if I want to, but. Right now it's not letting me click it at all. Oh, there we go. Jeez, it was just... I'm being very slow right now. Okay, fair enough. Ooh. That looks weird, too. Huh. Okay, things things are looking... We don't need this right now. Uh, I put Kerbal Alarm Clock uh, in there just because people like to have me have Kerbal Alarm Clock. Don't ask me why. Um, so this is the alternate resource panel. I'll put leave it up there so that you can see how it looks and appreciate its goodness. But I, I, I'm not gonna necessarily recommend it. Um, now, uh, realism isn't just a matter of of uh, complexity and difficulty. There is realism in terms of looks, and that's where the next uh, mods that I'm going to highlight uh, come in. So, you see, first of all, this, this looks good, but, but in particular, we see certain formations here that, uh, that look familiar. And, in fact, yes, yes, uh, this is the Real Solar System mod. And the new version of the Real Solar System mod uh, not only uh, allows you to have little asteroids coming in, near-Earth asteroids, but it has Earth, Earth, Earth looking like Earth, right? It has the moon at a uh, at tilt, but but uh, the hmm, is it the right tilt? I don't know. It looks looks. Oh well, there we go. There we go. Yes, yes. Because of the axial tilt of the world itself, the moon is actually at a uh, twenty odd degree angle, twenty three point five, right? And so is the rest of the system. 
<laughs> because we can't simulate axial tilt, um, the entire system had to be tilted to uh, simulate the fact that uh, Earth itself is tilted. So they've they've done that. The only retextured uh, worlds are uh, are the I think the Moon and Earth. I, I I haven't checked out the Moon yet, honestly. But uh, the rest the rest are still the default planets. But uh, yeah, you've got uh, Jupiter. Uh, I guess Dres is in for Saturn, Uranus, and uh, Neptune. Uh, no, I guess that's Pluto. I can never figure out how it works after uh, Jupiter. I, I'm, I'm good with uh, Mars and Jupiter and the rest. Uh, we seem to be missing one planet somewhere. Okay, um, so that's real solar system mod. But you'll also notice that I have the visual enhancement mod installed. Visual enhancement mod is the clouds and city lights. You can see the city lights here. And so this is the clouds and city lights mod. And uh, there's there's substantial enhancements for this mod. Oh, I need to, um, no, 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 uh, get, so far, Kerbal Alarm Clock. I don't need all the mech jeb stuff here and tack light support. Let's get those in. So yeah, real solar system, which means this is the real sized Earth, by the Earth, by the way. So if you look, to, uh, If you looked at our delta V stats, you might have seen that our vacuum delta V was 4,466. Well, that would have been enough to get us to space uh, into orbit in regular KSP, but not with real solar system. With real solar system, we're not even going to get across the Atlantic Ocean. And it is the Atlantic Ocean. We are uh, lifting off from Cape Canaveral. And I, I have mixed feelings about that because Really, uh, we should have picked a neutral location, because uh, this is sort of very, very American. And what if, what if I want to build a Soyuz? Uh, I'm not going to lift a Soyuz from Cape Canaveral. Um, so, there's so yeah, mixed feelings about that. Uh, let's just leave it at that. And uh, yeah, so everything is resized, and that's why the mountains look much, much more distant and sort of flatter. And so that's that's a unfortunate side effect, but there you are. Okay, let me go back to. Okay, why does it want to keep? Okay, let let's let. I don't want it showing me the waste. Why why. Why is it showing me waste and wastewater? I don't have it uh, selected here. Do I have it selected? Here? Okay, now it's gone. Okay, all right. I think we're ready to go. Uh, SAS on SAS such as it is. I don't know how much SAS we have on this thing. Should have more actually. Well, this could end in complete disaster and probably will, but here we go. You'll need to have Ferrum Aerospace at least installed if you're going to be using the real solar system because the real solar system uh, getting through the atmosphere would not be easy without uh, Ferrum Aerospace. I don't feel like we're going up today. Well, let's see if the end of the runway magic helps. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. Uh, gear up. So, now that we have the real Earth, which is, this is the first time in real solar system, I think that we have the real Earth texture. One thing we absolutely must not do is launch ballistic missiles at other countries. Okay, folks, let's, let's agree to this. Ooh, and now you can see one of the, one of the little, uh, features of visual enhancements. We have clouds! We have volumetric clouds. Uh, this is also new for um, KSP version 0.23.5. They are going a little bit fast considering I'm breaking the speed of sound already. Uh, let's verify that with FAR. Uh, no, we're, we're a little bit short of the speed of sound. Now we're breaking the speed of sound, but we still see the clouds racing faster than us. Um, they're uh, at this latitude. They're westerly clouds, so they actually um, they are going from west to east. Uh, but uh, oh wow, yeah, that they're going very fast. I guess there's no way to fix that. I, I don't know what the rules are for that. How I don't even know how this is encoded into the game. I mean, it's crazy that we have clouds. We have clouds, folks. There are clouds. So you can uh, punch your way through clouds and everything. 
Now I need to gain more altitude and less horizontal speed, otherwise I'm going to be starting to uh, encounter issues with everything. Um, especially deadly reentry, which will start making things very hot. Oh, uh, let's let's show you a little bit about deadly reentry. You can see deadly reentry has uh, is modeling the temperature on this, and so it's going up. And if it reaches that limit that I talked about, that is encoded into the game, uh, about a thousand uh, Celsius or more, uh, then then you're gonna have trouble. The drag, this the lift coefficient, drag coefficient, and uh, I guess a center of mass? I, I, I don't know what that one is. Um, but uh, current drag is there, so you see the drag on this particular part, and this is all ferrum aerospace. Okay, and uh, there are drags on all the parts. You can see how much drag each part is producing. This part is uh, producing negligible amounts of drags and it is declining because uh, most of the drag is hitting right, well, it's, it's a little bit, I guess because uh, airflow is hitting that like that. Okay. So we're going very, very high. Are we going to reach space? I don't know yet. Space with the real solar system mod is 103 kilometers, not 70. So keep that in mind. And you can see we've, we, we're going fast. Uh, we're going to perhaps reach orbital velocity for regular Kerbal Space Program. Let's see when that happens. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much uh, now we're, reg, uh, we're uh, orbital velocity. And this is as much as it gets you on the real Earth. Not so much. Uh, we, we will go into space. So this is sort of like our X-15, well... I, uh, with a wing like this, I'm not even going to claim that. Uh, but there's Florida. Florida. Oh, let me not say anything more about Florida. I live in California, so I, I'm, just <laughs> uh, I'm sure we could trade all sorts of interesting comments about that. Uh, so yeah, this is all it gets you. 4, 000, uh, close to 4,500 meters per second of delta V. You need 9,500 to get into orbit around Earth. And that is a thing. So now you can uh, you can fly to other places if you want to do Kerbal Flight Simulator. I guess that can be a thing. Uh, for now, uh, we don't need to have both the both these things happening at the same time. Let's decouple the the lower portion of this since we don't really need it anymore. Uh, there we go. So the fact that the clouds are going a little bit too fast is a little bit annoying, but uh, not a huge thing. Oh, now now our electric charge is going to be draining. Well, that's I guess that's just, oh well. Uh, Cuba, the Bahamas. Actually, this would be good. I, I could uh, sort of do a sightseeing tour of the world uh, if I want to uh, use this. Hey, we're uh, we're going to crash land on. Well, let's see, what's what's an inoffensive place that I can crash land? Uh, you know, the Atlas Mountains in Africa, somewhere like that, or something like that, yeah. Seems like mountains are a good place to crash land, or, or we, we're going to safely land in the Pacific Ocean where our, uh, our carrier group can pick us up, something like that. Uh, or if you, uh, if you want to defect to Russia, I don't know. <laughs> All sorts of scenarios can be played out now uh, with the real solar system mod. You can uh, take your pick. Uh, what we really need is some way to put some runways all over the place or launch pads elsewhere. I guess the extra planetary launch pads mod would be able to help. I don't have that installed. I've never played with it. That's one of the other ones that I want to play around with in, uh, uh, in future future um, mod showcases uh, because I'd never played with it before but I want to take a look at it so uh, maybe we can put uh, you know uh, uh, supplementary VABs all over the place in uh, Baikonur or something like that uh, uh, give Jap Japan one the European Union actually has one closest to the equator I think I think the European Union actually does have a close to the equator 
Okay, uh, let's not have ourselves throttle up because we have made it into space, Jeb. We have made it into space. But we're coming right back down. Fast. Oh, we don't have any way to deal with heat. Uh oh. Jeb, I think you're gonna die. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you the delivery entry mod. <laughs> You know, in a in a way that shouldn't make Jeb smile, but uh, we'll see. Uh, there, there is lift on this thing, uh, sort of, a little bit. Let's see how much lift we can generate here. Not much, actually. <laughs> right away, it's apparent that I'm not gonna get much lift right now because I'm falling like a rock. Uh, there is a little bit of lift here, but it's not gonna be enough to save us. Uh, so you need to put heat shielding on your car. Now these these uh, parts I think come with some heat shielding. Uh, the thing is whether it's going to be enough, and the answer is no, 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 no. Um, uh, <laughs> oh dear. Oh, oh come on, attitude control, attitude control. Oh, parachute parachute oh that's not too bad okay so no for future reference if you don't have any uh, heat shielding on this particular capsule this is the way to point and I think that would have saved Jeb if we had just been pointing like that in the first place uh, because the parachutes would have been on this side and probably would have been shielded but, but we don't have any parachutes now and so Jeb is gonna die and uh, uh, I don't want to see it happen, so let's uh, let's go to the VAB, shall we? Uh, let, let's revert to the space plane hangar for now. Okay, so daily re-entry is going to have to be something you think about quite a lot. Another thing you're going to have to be thinking about quite a lot is engine igniter. If you want to install the... Excuse me. Um, if you want to install the full set of Realism Overhaul mods, you have to install... Let me go through these. A fermi Aerospace, Deadly Reentry, Engine Igniter, Real Shoots, Real Fuels, One of the Light Support Mods, Stretchy Tanks, Real Solar System, uh, One of the Real Engine Mods, and my preference is with Real Engines, and then the Realism Overhaul Pack. So that's 10 mods, okay? 10. Okay, Realism Overhaul resizes the parts, and does a whole bunch of other tweaks that uh, make life uh, interesting. So that that's sort of the capper. That's the last thing you need to install if you've got all the others. And so that's the Realism Overhaul Pack as it is currently. It used to, inc I, I think it used to include uh, Remote Tech 2, but because Remote Tech 2 isn't included right now, uh, isn't updated right now for this version, it's not including Remote Tech 2. Um, uh, there, there are the parts mods, but let me go to the VAB and talk about Engine Igniter.